A number of years ago, Kathleen Holly from Texas showed me this demonstration. It's called the Giant Alcohol Cannon. It looks rather intimidating, but it really is uh, a pretty safe demonstration if you're very careful with what you're doing. It's also pretty inexpensive. What I have here is, this is four inch sewer pipe. It's not the Schedule 40. What that means is the walls are much thinner. This is not designed to accommodate uh, pressure in type in water. This is more for, uh, well, your sewer line, letting the water run through it rather than uh, the thicker wall type of pipe, Schedule 40 or Schedule 80, which is also sold at large uh, stores. Um, what we do is we take, that comes in a 10 foot length typically. What we've done here is we've cut it in half. So it's five feet long. And then I've got an adapter here, which basically what we want to do is we want to take the pipe to this clean out at the end. And by clean out, what we mean is that I can unscrew this and have an open end here as well as there. And you'll see why that is later on. So I'm going to screw this back in. It doesn't have to be overly tight, but that should be good. I'd also point out that this is the ignition hole right here. This is going to be where we'll bring the aim and flame and we'll light the alcohol on fire right here. The procedure for this is very straightforward and really very, very safe. What we do, I'll first put my goggles on. And actually, the choice of Nerf ball, and I use that in a generic sense, there are two different types of Nerf balls. This type, and if you zoom in, you may be able to see that it's the foam cushy type. This is put out by a company uh, called Poof Products. And Poof Products, again, the squishy type, uh, is used indoors. This is the indoor version. Okay? The indoor version, and then there's the outdoor version. And this is actually the Nerf brand soccer ball. A Nerf soccer ball is a little bit harder to squeeze. You really have to work to squeeze that. That means it'll hold back a lot more pressure, and so we would use this only outside or in perhaps a gymnasium. We do use these alcohol cannons at our school pep assemblies. And I'll tell you, if you've, you can only imagine uh, the pride that our students have when they say, oh my gosh, that's my science teacher down there, and boom, the ball goes the length of the gym, because uh, I can use the Nerf soccer ball in the gymnasium. The procedure could not be easier. What I have would be two of these thin-stemmed pipettes, each containing the 95% ethyl alcohol. Very, very easy, uh, four milliliters total, two milliliters in each one. And what we're going to do, we'll add one squirt of the, methan or of the ethanol, rather, and I'm gonna go up to my elbow and I'm going to add that squirt. Then, since we're inside here at the Flynn Studio, I'm going to use the indoor version, and I'm going to push the ball in like this. Now, with the alcohol already inside, I then find the ignition hole, and I'll add my other squirt of alcohol directly in there. Well, now I just simply rotate it. I rotate around and around and around. And the reason that I'm doing this, if it's inside my classroom, it heightens their sense of, oh my gosh, what's he going to do? But primarily, from the teaching standpoint, I'm increasing the surface area uh, of the alcohol by spreading it all over the inside of the pipe. 
with more surface area, it evaporates faster, and that's what we want. We want the alcohol to vaporize. Now, this demonstration, when we perform it inside a classroom, it is a little bit loud, and we want to make sure that we wear our ear protection, and I would tell the students to please make sure that they cup their ears. All that we have to do at this point is bring the Amen flame up to this hole. The lit Amen flame provides the activation energy needed to have the alcohol catch on fire. You'll notice over here a delightful target. We'll see how accurate I can be. So I would ask the audience to cup your ears. Aim and flame is on, and we'll go on the count of three. One, two, three, firing! Not bad, not bad. As a teacher, you might be tempted, or many times the students will say, do it again, do it again. Well, we know as chemistry teachers, we have the combustion byproduct still present inside the, the barrel of the cannon. And that's where the clean out really comes in handy. Because all I have to do is unscrew this. And that will greatly assist me in putting fresh air inside this cannon. Now, there are times we want to make sure that this cannon we use 95% ethanol and we never ever ever want to try to add oxygen to this. It's very important that it's alcohol with air. If you were to try that with pure oxygen, uh, far far too violent. So we'd never want to try that. But the nice thing is I need to get some air in here if you're fortunate enough at your school to have a compressed air system, you would simply pass air through there. You could also use a hair dryer. But a technique that I enjoy, and it certainly does scare the children, and there's nothing wrong with that, is to act as if you were on the on-deck batter's circle. And so I will swing this like this. This is rather intimidating for many students when they see you doing this, especially if you're outside. And just like that, we've replaced the combustion byproducts with fresh air, and we would then be ready to repeat the demonstration, simply screwing the cap back on. The giant alcohol cannon very, very inexpensive to make. Uh, it requires basic plumbing skills in terms of connecting your PVC pipe, but the materials themselves probably cost less than $10. Certainly, and it's, it's the type of thing you make one time in your teaching career, and you should be able to use it for many, many years to come. Hopefully, you and your students enjoy the giant alcohol cannon as much as the students in Westerville have. And again, Thanks to Kathleen Holly, who helped share this one with me uh, many years ago. Uh, a number of students have enjoyed it. I hope your students do too.